did you know that the very medications meant to protect you could actually put you at risk? In this video, we're exposing the hidden dangers of common hypertension drugs that Big Pharma doesn't want you to know. We'll also cover which blood pressure medications are generally safest and provide the most benefit. By the end, you'll have the knowledge you need for an informed discussion with your healthcare provider to ask the right questions and get the life you deserve. Stay tuned until the end, where we'll also reveal natural ways to lower blood pressure, feel better, and potentially reduce your need for risky medications, because a little strategy goes a long way. But first, an important disclaimer. You should not stop taking your blood pressure medications based on what you learn in this video alone. Skipping medications can trigger rebound hypertension, sending blood pressure to dangerous levels. Always consult a medical doctor before making any changes to your medication regimen. Okay, first up, central agonists. Central agonists are one of the higher risk medications. Common forms include clonidine and immediate release guanfacine. They're not often used as first-line treatments for hypertension, meaning most doctors should consider other medications first. If other medications aren't working or are causing serious side effects, doctors may progress to central agonists. These work by tricking the brain, dampening your sympathetic nervous system. It's this system that's triggered in the fight or flight response. When your brain senses danger, like the classic example of a lion chasing a caveman, or your body is in a state of stress, the sympathetic nervous system responds. Your brain tells your heart to speed up, increases pressure to send blood pumping to your muscles, and even dilates your pupils, all so you can respond to danger with lightning speed. Central agonists artificially turn down the volume of this response, blocking nerve signals in order to slow down your heart and relax blood vessels, ultimately lowering blood pressure. It's an amazing piece of chemistry, but there can be serious side effects. Common problems with central agonists include depression or bradycardia, when your heart beats slower than it should. Like other medications we'll discuss, central agonists can also cause fatigue, constipation, diarrhea, nausea, dry mouth, impotence, trouble sleeping, and fluid retention. Rare but very serious side effects include hepatic necrosis and hemolytic anemia, a death of liver cells and the death of red blood cells. It's also important to note that, just as with other drugs, rebound hypertension happens when these medications are stopped, and can even happen if you miss a single day leading to a sudden increase in blood pressure. So be sure to follow the exact instructions with this and any other medication, and don't think it's okay to skip the odd day. On that note, it's important to be prepared. Make sure you have enough to last through long weekends or holidays, as well as unexpected interruptions like natural disasters. A basic emergency kit is key. As we discussed, central agonists aren't generally recommended as a first-line treatment. So if you've been put on a central agonist without trying other medications first, it may warrant a conversation with your doctor, or seeking a second opinion. That said, there may be a specific reason why you've been prescribed it. Be careful with over-the-counter medicines and even herbal supplements, as they can interfere with blood pressure medication. So have a discussion with your doctor before starting any supplement. If you've been told to split your dose throughout the day, make sure to follow this advice, as this can significantly reduce side effects. And if you're having any medical procedure, including dental surgery, make sure to tell them what medications you're taking. Next, alpha blockers include drugs like doxazosin, prazosin, and terazosin. These work by blocking alpha adrenergic receptors in the body, which reduces the constriction of blood vessels and allows for better circulation. 
Alpha blockers are often used for high blood pressure patients who also have prostate enlargement. This is because, in addition to lowering blood pressure, these medications also relax muscle fibers in the prostate. Unfortunately, alpha blockers can trigger a sudden, severe drop in blood pressure when you stand up. Studies show that these patients have significantly increased risks of falling and requiring emergency room care. Yet, some doctors downplay this risk. This commonly occurs after the first dose when increasing dosage, which is why it's often recommended to take the first dose at bedtime. Other potential side effects of alpha blockers include heart palpitations, weakness, nasal congestion, and headaches. Patients may also experience drowsiness, so it's important to understand how these medications affect you before driving or operating heavy machinery. Less common problems include blurry vision, shortness of breath, and excess sweating. Some men experience a painful erection, which is a serious symptom that requires immediate medical attention. If you're taking an alpha blocker, it's important to communicate openly about any side effects so that your treatment plan can be adjusted. And again, inform your healthcare provider about any over-the-counter drugs or supplements to avoid potential interactions. Consider taking up Tai Chi, yoga, dancing, or another exercise that improves balance, which can significantly reduce the risk of falls. Shortly, we'll cover more tips that every person with hypertension should know. But first, vasodilators like hydralazine and minoxidil target the smooth muscle cells in the walls of arteries and veins, directly causing them to relax. What most people don't realize about vasodilators is that they shouldn't really be used as a first-line option. For most people, they should only be used if you don't respond well to other treatments, as well as in emergency situations. They can cause tachycardia, a rapid increase in heart rate, as well as intense joint pain, and commonly cause headaches, dizziness, and swelling in the legs and feet, which can require even more medication. Hydralazine has a relatively short half-life. This means you may need to take it multiple times per day. If you are told to do this, it's important to follow those instructions as failing to do so could lead to unstable blood pressure and increased side effects. The alarming truth is that vasodilators can be significantly more problematic than some of the other medications we'll discuss in a moment. So if your doctor hasn't tried any alternatives beforehand or explained why you need this specific medication, it may be worth up a follow-up conversation. Next, Loop diuretics like furosemide, bumetanide, and torsemide are often used when fluid retention is a problem. They target the kidney, effectively increasing urine production. This reduces fluid volume, which in turn lowers blood pressure. The rapid loss of fluid can lead to dehydration and electrolyte imbalances, notably in sodium, potassium, and magnesium levels. This can have significant repercussions, including cramping, extreme fatigue, confusion, and nausea. Beyond natural approaches we'll discuss shortly, some people on loop diuretics may be prescribed supplements or additional medications to correct this imbalance. Hearing damage is a concern with loop diuretics, especially for people with kidney dysfunction. Less commonly, loop diuretics may lead to issues with the liver and pancreas, as well as sudden cardiac arrhythmias. Other common side effects include sensitivity to sunlight, increased triglyceride levels, and dizziness, as well as waking up to pee more frequently during the night. It's important to note that diuretics, as well as our next drug, can also be a problem for hyperglycemia, they interfere with insulin function, increasing the risk of high blood sugar. So if you have diabetes or are at risk for high blood sugar, talk to your doctor about alternatives. Whether you're diagnosed with diabetes or not, 
it's a good idea to keep an eye on your blood sugar levels because an estimated 38% of adults in the US are considered pre-diabetic, many without knowing it. At number 4, beta blockers such as atenolol, metoprolol, and propranolol function by blocking beta adrenergic receptors in blood vessels. This action slows the heart rate and reduces the force of heart contractions, effectively lowering blood pressure. They are fairly well tolerated and are some of the most widely used medications for blood pressure, preventing recurrent heart attacks, treating angina, as well as being used for glaucoma. However, beta blockers are not without their challenges. They can lead to fatigue, cold hands and feet, and particularly vivid dreams or nightmares. Some men also experience erectile dysfunction when taking beta blockers. They can also contribute to blurred vision, dizziness, and depression in rare cases. While beta blockers are still widely used, especially in patients with angina or chronic heart failure, they are no longer the preferred choice for most people as a first-line treatment. That's mainly because other medications we'll discuss next tend to be more effective at preventing heart attack and stroke. Coming up, we'll share which blood pressure medications are least likely to cause serious side effects. But first, sitting around the middle for safety are calcium channel blockers. These drugs are often used as part of a first-line treatment. Calcium channel blockers inhibit the movement of calcium into artery walls. They can be particularly effective in elderly patients, and side effects tend to be less common. That said, some people do experience swelling in the feet and lower legs, dizziness, headache, and palpitations. Although these tend to be mild and diminish over time as your body adjusts to the medication. It's important to note that calcium channel blockers can interact with grapefruit, leading to increased levels of the medication in the bloodstream and potentially raising the risk of side effects. So it's best to stay away from grapefruit. Or even better, go for lifestyle changes that may help you enjoy delicious fruit, have more energy and potentially less reliance on medication. Next. ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril, enalapril, and ramiropril tend to be fairly well tolerated. ACE inhibitors are particularly effective in patients with diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and heart failure. However, they can cause a persistent dry cough for some people and are associated with a risk of angioedema a rare but serious swelling of the deeper layers of the skin. Stay tuned because next we'll reveal simple lifestyle changes that can dramatically lower blood pressure. But first, the medication class that tends to be the best tolerated. ARBs are generally considered the safest option with the least side effects. These include Azilsartan, Candesartan, Eprosartan, and Olmosartan. Of course, just like any medication, there can be side effects with ARBs, including headache, fatigue, back pain, leg swelling, and in rare cases, liver failure or irregular heartbeat. These problems are less common with ARBs than the others we discussed, but it does drive home the point that preventing high blood pressure in the first place or reducing hypertension through lifestyle factors is always the best route. So, what can make a difference? Regular physical activity is vital. Whether it be something gentle like walking, tai chi, dancing, or swimming, exercise within your capabilities and talk to a trusted professional before starting a new exercise regime. Exercise strengthens the heart, enabling it to pump blood more efficiently, thus reducing pressure on your arteries. After all, blood pressure goes up in order to pump blood around your body, and artificially reducing it with medication isn't ideal. Stress management is one that people overlook or struggle to keep up with 
in the modern world. Chronic stress contributes to elevated blood pressure in very tangible evolutionary ways. Techniques such as mindfulness, meditation, deep breathing exercises, and yoga can help reduce stress, as well as ticking your exercise boxes. Slightly more challenging, try to address external stresses if you can. 10% improvement can make a big difference. It's imperative to regularly monitor your blood pressure as you adopt any changes. If your blood pressure improves, your healthcare professional may adjust your medication dosage to avoid the risk of hypertension or low blood pressure due to medication. Great news! Quality sleep is equally important because poor sleep is extremely damaging for blood pressure, stress, energy production, cravings, hormones, brain fog, digestion, and heart health. Watch our video on sleep routines for more on that. Both alcohol and tobacco raise blood pressure and negate the effects of hypertension medications, so limiting them is key. Weight management plays a significant role, so if you're overweight, even a modest weight loss can help. And the importance of hydration cannot be overstated. Drinking plenty of water helps to keep your vascular system in balance. Finally, a heart-healthy diet is a cornerstone of blood pressure management. So focus on whole foods, especially vegetables, legumes, antioxidant-rich fruits, and quality proteins. Certain foods stand out more than others. So watch our video on 15 powerful foods to lower blood pressure. And for that sleep routine we discussed, check out the video on seven proven tips to beat heart disease. We'll leave a link to that in the description or click the image on screen. If you found this information useful, click the like button and click subscribe to see more practical heart health videos as we release them.